Hi, my name is Chris, and welcome to Movie Vault 666. Today I'm looking at a movie which I picked up from my local cash exchange from the bargain section. The movie had to be bought not only because of the cheesy title, but also because of the way they name drop it on the back of the box. The movie is called Time to Die. And that sounds like a movie worth owning, doesn't it? Especially for a quid, or less. But the main thing that made me buy this movie, besides the bargain price, was the fact that it says she learns that the time to fight is not the time to die. What? What does that even mean? What kind of dumbass character needs to learn that anyway? And the cheesy box art obviously also added to my decision to pick this up and part with less money than it would take for me to buy a cola can. But anyway, that's enough about the box. I'll only discover whether my money was well invested by actually looking at what's on the DVD and oh my god, they actually list Scene Select as a feature. And it doesn't even contain anything else apart from the movie in a trailer that ruins the ending. But I'm tired of, I'm tired of complaining already and I haven't even got to the actual movie so finally I decided to hit the play button. Okay, so why do so many movies open with a picture of the moon? Unless you're shooting a werewolf movie, I have absolutely no idea why it matters. So the movie begins proper with some gun dealers meeting on top of a car park with their contact. Unfortunately, some kid keeps bothering one of the dealer's cars. For some reason, the kid then proceeds to key the dealer's car before getting shot by him. And I love screaming kid kids because it's clearly not his own. And I have no idea where this is taking place, but the, the kid screams and then the police and an ambulance show up. Anyway, all of this is just a poor lead up to meeting our main character, Jackie Swanson, a freelance photographer who gets the job done even as the police officer next to her takes a couple of bullets in the chest. We also see another main character, Frank, who's a detective. He's evidently a bit jumpy because he nearly blasts Jackie, which would have made the movie considerably shorter. Doesn't happen, but I guess a man can dream. After getting rid of Jackie, who's snooping around, Frank then goes on to use his great negotiating skills for the sort of results you might expect. You got two choices! Give up or die! Well, I guess it's always nice to have a choice, but this attempt to subdue them fails in getting Frank killed. Just about. So Frank shoots one guy and the other attempts to run away. But, shock horror, Jackie didn't leave after all and subdues him. <sighs> That's not cricket. Anyway, the bad guy gets arrested and we learn that he was born here, which was incredibly relevant. And whilst that's going on, Jackie shows what a great photographer she is by just taking 20 shots a second in any random direction. Oh, you understand me? I was born here. So the movie settles down for a bit after that. The two main characters go for coffee. A cup of tea. Right, sorry. So the movie basically dumps exposition into our laps for a while and shows us that the two main characters are going to be irritatingly smug around each other, which means they're probably going to be love interests, and survive. More's a pity. We also find out that Jackie has a husband and a son, and that Frank is single. And so Jackie returns home to her massive apartment, which shows what you could make as a freelance photographer, apparently. But we find out that actually she's divorced from her husband and unable to see her son most of the time. Which works for me if it keeps that bloody annoying kid out of the movie as much as possible. Now listen to this. Oh, God forbid she's on a date. Now play a million times, and that's basically the character's dialogue for the rest of the movie. That's Sheila, and her job is basically just to whine about how her husband doesn't support his ex-wife who's on probation for drug dealing. I am not sticking up for anyone. I just happen to think she's right all the time. And here's the aforementioned annoying brat. Is that mommy on the phone? And I can't wait to hear more excellently delivered lines like that. Okay, so back with Jackie and she decides to go read a book. Or under some kind of evil lair. Why? What's going on here? Why does she have such an elaborate room for developing photos in? Is, is this some kind of version of Footloose where developing photos is illegal rather than dancing? I, I, I honestly don't get why she has such an elaborate room for it. Now we get a scene of Jackie going into her photo room and nothing happens. Then the scene changes, and nothing happens. Then we get a shot of the kid, where nothing happens. Then Sheila fills out the boob quota for the movie. And then we get a chance to watch the family, plus Jackie, try miserably to interact. God, you look so handsome. 
Seriously, the twinkly music and the way the characters interact, it's like one of those life insurance adverts and the bit before they show you they could all be taken away. I'm gonna go see the elephants. I love to see the elephants. I know you do. I brought you something. Wanna see? Yeah. Okay, close your eyes. Okay. So, after about a quarter of an hour of nothing happening, Jackie goes to talk to Shaft. Shaft is in this movie? And I'll tell you something, young lady. Second time offenders go before a completely different kind of judge. You got that? You got that? Yes, I do. Good. So anyway, Captain Sharp talks to Jackie and tells her to take pictures not of violence, but instead of things that show the police in a good light. He also exposits to the audience that Jackie is working for the police as part of her community service. Jackie bumps into Frank as she's leaving the captain's office, and together they go to find the domestic disturbance she can photograph. Apparently the house is a constant source of trouble and occupied by two lesbians. Frank decides to wait till they've calmed down a bit, and the whole scene ends pretty much like this. Which might be funny, if it hadn't been so terribly acted. The plot gives a brief flicker of life when Jackie tells Frank that she isn't actually married. Jackie then goes on to recount the events of her arrest and says that she's innocent. Then Frank takes her on a date to the firing range, because of course that's apparently the single most romantic place you can take a girl, and okay, I don't even know why I'm bothering to be sarcastic, because of course it works and they instantly hit the sack. Then for some reason Frank tells Jackie how she did it at the firing range. Why? Wasn't she there, or is this police station so anal they actually have to take away the firing range targets for autopsies? But anyway, things get awkward when Jackie gets upset that Frank is a cop and has now decided that she can't be around him because... I'm part of the system that took my son away from me. But now that Frank's gone, Jackie decides to sit around and mope and listen to an answer machine message that her son left her. Are you there? The elders are low. I miss you. I love you, Mommy. Bye. But that level of bad acting causes her vision to blur, and we get... a cheesy montage! Bye. Oh, great. And I thought the earlier bit looked like an insurance I commercial. You. I love you. I love you. The movie cuts to Jackie taking pictures of a dance scene, which is so terrible, you'd think it surely has to be from the 80s, but apparently it's from the 90s, which is even more moronic. And then Frank arrives, and for the first time I'm genuinely glad to see him, because he's saving me from the scene. But my initial reaction is immediately thrown away, because the scene just peters out into them failing to make me laugh and arranging a date. Oh great, he also got her a gun. That's a perfect present. Well, I got one for my girlfriend last year. Cut to a bar scene, and after some boring dialogue, Jackie realises she recognises someone at the bar as her arresting officer. He's paying a prostitute for sex, so she decides to follow him. And even though he's driving off by the time she reaches the valet, she somehow catches up to him in the next scene. Thanks, bad editing. Eventually the cop arrives in an alleyway, and lets the woman out of the car to go into a building, when suddenly a man pulls into the alleyway in a car of his own, and goes into the building as well. Yeah, whatever you say, buddy. You've got to love the 7-Up machine that conveniently placed in the background. Sunshine! No, didn't catch that time either. Okay, so whoever this guy is, he just keeps running around, yelling the same thing and threatening people, until he finds the hooker who leads him into an obvious trap. Okay, so the hooker leads him into an alleyway where the cop jumps out, and, oh, no wait, evidently not. She has to run into another alleyway first after being beaten by him before that happens. 